What's up everyone, my name is Blue and we are back with more malicious compliance posts. Following the rules to make people look like fools. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, let's get into it. My appointment was canceled for being five minutes late? I guess I have to reschedule. This happened about four years ago when I got a summer job at my university. The job was working for professors that I had worked with before, and they asked me last minute to teach a summer workshop to 9th and 10th graders. So, with less than two weeks before the camp starts, I have a bunch of paperwork to do first, including clearances that say I can work with kids. One of these is an official FBI check for which they need my fingerprints. Well, I needed to do the physical fingerprinting right away in order to get the results in time. Luckily, I was able to book a fingerprinting appointment for that Friday, booked 24 hours in advance as required, which would be just barely enough time to get the result. That Friday, I catch the subway to campus and it's atrociously slow. I'll admit, I should have planned for this. The subway here is always behind. Anyway, I end up slightly late getting to campus, so I literally run to the police station and enter the front room at exactly five minutes after my appointment time. I know this because as I stepped through the door, I felt my phone buzz with what turned out to be a your appointment has been canceled email. I speak to the security cop behind bulletproof glass inside and I learned the appointment was canceled after he checks my confirmation number. Apparently, they are automatically canceled if you're not checked in within five minutes. Obviously, this is outrageous, but I'm usually a patient guy. I ask if I can book a new appointment. That's no good, since it would have to be Monday or later. So, I grab a coffee from across the street and return to sit inside the police station to try and solve this with some Googling while I slip into a more and more frantic state of frustration. I can't find anywhere in the city that can fingerprint me before Monday. But here's what really pushed me over the edge. While I'm sitting there, at this point 30 minutes past my appointment time, someone else comes in for fingerprints. She shows up five minutes early. They take her in immediately, and she's out before her appointment was even scheduled to begin. The entire thing took her about two minutes. I point out to the cop behind the glass, as politely as I can, that clearly someone could see me right now because her appointment is already over. Why can't I have the current slot? But the cop insists that since my appointment was canceled, my registration info was no longer in the system and I can't be seen today. That's when the idea comes to me, and I confirm with him that showing up early is not a problem, because they would have my appointment and registration info in the system. You see where I'm going with this. So I quietly sit back down and take out my phone. About 10 minutes later, I calmly approach him again and say, hello, I have a new appointment to be fingerprinted. I'm about 72 hours early. I have never seen such an exasperated sigh in my life. But he checked my new confirmation number and everything was in order. Within 10 minutes, I was walking back out after getting fingerprinted. Hey, if you're going to get mad about five minutes late, I don't think you're allowed to get mad about 72 hours early. That's, that's one heck of a way to game the system. Overtime is no longer allowed? Okay. The players, fake names, owner, Jack, direct supervisor, Will, colleague, Paula, and myself. Backstory. I began working payroll at 16 years old. I am incredibly good with numbers as well as dealing with clients. Suffice it to say, I am wonderful at what I do. Many years ago, I began working with a very small payroll company with only four workers. I really liked the owner, Jack, and 
honestly still do. He is a decent dude. I also really liked the work and the clients. However, I was not fond of Paula or Will. Paula missed so much work, and I'm pretty sure no one has five grandfathers that died within three years. She doesn't figure much into this story other than to showcase that she was not a good employee. Will was the worst supervisor I have ever had. He took smoke breaks every 30 minutes. He always thought he was right. He was very racist and sexist, and boy, he loved to talk. There were times where he was monologuing to a client who had hung up 30 minutes prior. No, I am not exaggerating. However, he was the owner's father-in-law whose prior business went bankrupt. Basically, he was never going to be fired. In that work setting, I absolutely shined. I was the best employee by a huge margin. The malicious compliance. Will calls me into his office and lets me know that I am getting too much overtime. This was a small business and I needed to be careful. Now, I never took much overtime. Overall, I usually had around two to five minutes by the end of the week, simply because I lived five minutes away and clocked in when I got in and settled, even if it was a minute early. I agreed to the new rule with a bit of glee. From then on, if I got in early, I would get ready to clock in and then play on my phone or read for one minute before clocking in. This drove Will absolutely crazy. After I did this for a few days, he called me back into his office. He told me about the good old days when people would work even without pay in order to excel at life. I politely reminded him that we were a payroll company, so he should be aware that it is illegal to not pay workers for time worked. From that point on, he would simply mutter under his breath and glare at me. The aftermath. After three to four weeks, the owner, Jack, calls me into his office. Apparently, Will had been complaining about me, about how I wasn't working hard and was being disrespectful. I explained the situation to him and pointed out that no clients had ever been unhappy with me, that I showed up to work every day on time, and that I had the most duties with the least problems. Basically, I reminded him I was his only good employee. Jack was a little shocked and annoyed that my tiny amount of overtime was the reason I was sitting in his office. He told me that if I needed it, I could have up to 30 minutes of overtime without needing it to be approved. And he also gave me a small raise for being such a hard worker. Finally, he told me that if Will ever gave me another rule that I disagreed with, I should go directly to him. Jack then called Will into his office and I heard quite a bit of yelling. When Will came back out, he looked like he had just sucked a lemon. It is my fondest memory of Will. All that for five minutes of overtime? That's insane. They should just be happy the guy's showing up on time. I mean, I have a tough time getting to work on time and I work from home. Store would not let me return sale item so I changed it for full price dress and got my money back. In summer of 2019, my brother was getting married and of course, I left dress shopping to the last minute. So I bought a dress without trying it on as I was on my lunch break and there was a sale and a lot of people and queues to dressing rooms. I reasoned that the dress was a bit oversized so it could not look bad. I was wrong, of course, as it did not look oversized, but just big and ill-fitting. The store had a return policy where you could return any items for 30 days and get the cash back, or if the item was on sale, then you cannot get the money back but instead get a gift card so you can buy something else there. I went back to the store, got the gift card with an intent to just buy something else, but could not find anything I like or that fits. 
went back again after a few weeks but still no luck, and I started to think that just getting my money back would be better. I asked the employee if I couldn't just return the gift card for money, but no, not possible. So while hopelessly wandering around the store, I suddenly came up with an idea and went to the same employee. I asked if I buy something from New Collection for full price with the gift card, then can I return it and get my money back? He was a bit taken aback, but confirmed that, yes, that is how it works. I asked, what is the point for the policy then if you can bypass it this easy? He said, no one has asked that before, but that employees themselves and their friends are doing it this way. So I took the dress that was right next to the counter. He asked me to wait for a few days before returning it so it would not look suspicious and checked me out. Came back to the store two days later when another employee was working, returned the dress and got my money back. That just seems like a sly way for the company to steal your money for buying sale items that you don't like. And that's it for today's malicious compliance stories. If you liked any of the stories, make sure to click that like button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more stories. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch you later.